with a nut job there, buddy. I'm not saying that's calling your shot, but... Oops. It's calling it, pretty much. <laughs> Hey, Ken Smith, KenSmithFishing.com, take 227, action. <laughs> uh, it's amazing the dumb stuff I say on here, and I have to go back and go, don't include that and edit it out. So this is going to be the Rayburn tournament, the Rayburn BFL tournament, 1st of March, 2019. Uh, I've got practice day, and we're going to go through the practice day, and then we've got tournament day, just spoiler alert here, I catch almost 19 pounds, 18-14 finish in seventh place. Very happy with that finish. Uh, obviously fishing a bunch to, against a bunch of guys who spent three, four, five days down here practicing. I, I got to practice on Friday. Uh, and in hindsight, I wish I had had a couple of more spots. Another day of practice, I, I probably could have found a couple of more spots because I really beat up the two little groups of fish that I found. But um, in practice, I was getting a number of bites, uh, but I just had uh, sort of spooled up picked up a rod, rigged up a bait, and gone fishing. And so at the, at the beginning of the second video, which we'll, I'll, I'll air just here real shortly, I'm going to show you the rod and reel setup, the hook and the sinker setup that allowed me, knock on wood, to catch every bite that I had in a place or in places that are very, very hard to pull fish out of. So. Um, I'll also tell you, so you're going to see, I, I pull on a couple of fish early in practice, and then I say, this is going to get boring, and I put on a screw lock. I took my hook off. Um, I caught yesterday three fish, only one of which didn't matter, which it, it was a solid four, four and a quarter, uh, that I had bite the day before that I shook off. So uh, when you are flipping grass, when you are flipping bushes, when you're flipping boat docks, if you have the patience, I know we all have this problem, especially those of us. If I got to practice for five days, it would be really easy for me to shake bites off. But when I come to Rayburn, I want to catch fish. It's really hard to say I'm not pulling on these fish anymore. But it paid off. Uh, that fish was a, probably a pound and a half cull, actually probably closer to a two pound cull. Uh, that had I stuck that fish the day before, there's no way I catch that fish. Saturday. So um, I would strongly urge you as you practice to uh, when you're on a good bite, especially a good shallow bite where you're flipping, where you're throwing to targets and you know you can come back and throw to that same target again, uh, shake a fish off. Uh, it can pay off for you. So, But this is the tournament day footage for the uh, BFL Cowboy Tournament. I finished seventh. I had a pretty good tournament. I never got a great big bite. Um, I had a good solid five and a half, six pound bite and some other good solid fish. And truthfully, um, I had most of this weight by probably noon and I really thought later in the day I could get a couple of more big bites. I think to a large degree, I just kind of ran out of fish. I only got to practice one day. Uh, I, I really didn't catch anything uh, the fr Friday morning. And uh, I found these, this first group of fish about one. I found the second group of fish about two. Had I had another half day to full day of practice, um, I could have probably found some more fish. But uh, let's all be honest here, a seventh place finish for seven or $800 that I won, um, I do better in the insurance business in Dallas, Texas. So this is just for fun for me. Um, but I did have a great time. Um, by the way, I got an email this week, and, and so I fished the, um, fished the Rattle Trap Tournament last Sunday with Steve Evans, also known as the Moon Pie, and somebody said, why does he set the hook multiple times? And I will tell you, I never do that. And actually, I said something to Steve about it because he set the hook on a fish, and he said it, he said it, and he said it about four or five times, and I'm like, what are you doing? And he said, well... I never caught up with that fish, and I was trying to make sure I got a hook in that fish. But I also noticed in the footage he did it more than one time. I have a very strong belief about this, that if I get one good solid pull or, or jerk on a fish, I don't do it again. 
there's, there's t one reason, but I think two things can happen and both of them are bad when you do that. Number one is when you make that second and that third and that fourth pull, you are simply making the hole in that fish's mouth bigger and giving that fish a better chance to shake that bait off. And the other is, I think a lot of times, especially trap, crankbait, you'll get those fish that get stuck on the outside of the face or uh, Dickie caught a six pounder with me a couple of years ago. He hooked in the dorsal fin and had he jerked and jerked, he'd have jerked that, that rattle trap out of that fish's dorsal fin and we would not have caught that fish. With fluorocarbon line and with braided line, we, I don't throw mono almost ever. I, I don't have a rod in the boat with mono on it. That no stretch line, today's quality of hooks, today's quality of rods, uh, once those fish are stuck, leave them be. Don't pull on them over and over. That's just my two cents. But I also want to talk to you guys before we go to the fishing footage. Actually, let's go to a little bit of fishing footage, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about my setup and why I think it makes a huge difference and some folks who have influenced me in what my setup is. So we started out here, by the way, this first fish, I flip in this bush and I pick up on it and these fish, not one of these fish thumped it. You just pick up on it and I'm flipping a three quarter ounce weight and I'll tell you why. And if that feels like it weighs more than three quarters of an ounce, you probably got a bite going on. And Mike even made a comment later in the day, he caught a fish. He's not done a lot of this flipping. I, by the way, so the guy in the back of the boat with me, here's Mike Taylor. Mike owns the stump down in Brooklyn. So if you're down at the stump, you'll see Mike. He's in there most of the time. Um, <laughs> on, his, on the first fish he caught, he said, oh crap. I said, what? And he goes, well, I felt that weight you were talking about, that mushy feeling. And I said, yeah. And he said, and I set the hook and I caught that fish. And I said, yeah. And he goes, I think I've had that feeling three or four times already today when I didn't set the hook. Um, I flipped in there. It was my third or fourth bit fish. And I picked up and I thought, well, that feels like a fish. And when I started to reel down on it, I felt that fish turn loose up. And I'm like, oh, crud, I missed that fish. And I let it sit there a second and I hopped it. And I hopped it again. And boom, that fish bit it. And which doesn't happen very often. It was a, a very fortunate bite. I wound up culling that fish, but uh, I would have been heartbroken because I went probably 40 or 50 minutes before I had my second bite. And uh, I got that little devil and that little angel on my shoulder, and that little devil would have been talking in my ear and telling me to get out of there and get up in those shallow stuff and catch a bunch of fish. You can get up in the pole timber, I'll call it, up in the sweet gum trees and the pine trees and catch a ton of fish down here. But to catch the bigger fish right now, you got to stay out a little bit deeper. That will change over the next couple of weeks, or the water's going to come down. It's going to pull all of them out of there. Even with the water falling, there's a ton of fish up behind the bushes in that pole timber. Again, be careful what's above you. But let's look at that first fish that, uh, that I got lucky with. Here we go. Bit it. I missed him. I left it in there and hopped it once. He come back up there and bit it. It's a good start. Two and three quarter, maybe three. So we've, uh, it's about eight ten. We've made a pass through a section I got bit in yesterday and I caught one, that first fish y'all saw. Got all my electronics off trying to be real sneaky and we've gotten kind of to the back back here and I've spooked two fish out of the tops of bushes. So these fish may have come up in the water column a little bit. If that's the case, that'll catch them. I'm gonna wing it around back here a little bit and see. Guys, literally, as the camera clicked off, I caught a fish. It's actually a fish I shook off yesterday in there, or it's in the same bush. I don't know if it's the same fish or not, but it's just a keeper. It's 14 and a quarter, so. Uh, not what I had hoped, but uh, right now you can't get two till you get one, or one till you get two, or three till you get two. So 
Still on that hematoma beaver. Keep thinking they're gonna catch a great big one in one of these middle bushes. I think the biggest fish I ever caught in Raven was in a bush like this out in the middle of a bay in the, in the canyons. Put the Senko in there and went tonk and swam out. I caught that fish and I had guys all around me and I just brought her up to the side. I'm like, golly, turned her loose. Just saying, there ought to be a big in one of them bushes right out there. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank you for the net job there, buddy. I'm not saying that's calling your shot, but. Oops. It's calling it pretty much. Four. 